And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Benched with Bubba, episode 660. It's going to be a fun one, folks. Fantasy baseball starting pitchers. Yes, it is an important topic in fantasy baseball. And who better to help talk about fantasy baseball starting pitchers? You know, FSWA Writer of the Year, or at least, you know, Articles of the Year. He does Podcast of the Year. Um, pretty soon he's not gonna have enough room for well, he's got to get a glare screen because those like glass trophies are gonna affect the lighting system in his office with so it's many fine. of them, with so many of them, it's gonna get wild. But before he just starts running here because he's trying to show them off as we speak, you can find him on Twitter at pitcher list. Nick Pollock, how we doing, my friend? What is happening? Oh, Bubba, this is so good. I'm, I'm glad we're able to do this. I'm touched that you brought me on for this signing pitching one, I'll be honest with you. I, I do think one of these years you're going to bring me on for another one, thinking like it's going to be a joke. I'm going to blow your mind. It's going to blow I, your mind. I almost put together a hitting outline for you just for fun. I mean, you, I don't read the outlines anyway, so who cares? I know. That's true. That's true. You do not. You literally asked me before the show, did you send me an outline? I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, yesterday, Nick. <laughs> well, how are we doing, my friend? Oh, we're doing great. We're doing great because we just get to hang out now. Nice. And have the medium of talking about starting pitchers, fine. But uh, but I just get to hang out with Bubba. This is wonderful. Yep. It's always great. Before we talk about, you know, starting pitching this season and all the fun stuff that you have going on, plug away of what you have going on because you are oh, you busy, know. busy, busy. All the stuff. Uh, oh, gosh. What what do I want to say? I mean, the you should be rating and reviewing this uh, uh. <laughs> this, this podcast. That's what you should be doing. If you are listening to this, and you're watching live on YouTube, which is awesome, by the way. You guys had like 80 plus people hanging out for the Tower Wars thing, which you guys did. It was amazing. You, the best decision you made was you didn't bring me on. <laughs> Number one decision. Number one decision was that. But no, seriously, that was uh, it was super awesome to see so many people there. And you guys should be watching this stuff live on YouTube. That's what Bubba does. So uh, great work. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. Don't forget, he's being humble. He has the new podcast, The Craft, with Eno Saris. So make sure you check that out. I believe, I believe it was episode seven that just dropped because I was listening I to it earlier so. today. Oh, man, you uh, did? Oh, I, my God. That was fun. I, yeah, I work out of my truck, so I listen to most shows within about no more than 48 hours of whoever's show comes out. <laughs> um, yeah, so that he's got that going. He's doing his daily spring training roundups. Uh, obviously, there's this thing called PitcherList.com. Um, they have a lot of cool stuff there. PLV, PL Pro, you can join there. All well, that kind of fun the, stuff. the player pages, if there's anything you yes. want to take away from this, and I, I can't ex express this enough, all the stuff that I'm talking about can pretty much just be pulled from the player pages that I made for my own analysis. Uh, yes. All this stuff is not accessible anywhere else. It's all stack as data, but then organized in a way that you want it. And if you have questions about how to use it, it's intimidating. Just ask uh, seriously or read the article I wrote for the FTN draft guy that's free about how I use it. So truly, yeah. it's the thing that you should be using. Get yourself away from just quoting whips and ERAs and just overall strikeout rates and stuff. There's so much more information that can make you discern a player better. And we have it at Pitcher List for our player pages. So go check them out. Yep, we're going to talk about some of that because those player pages are amazing. I know people have talked about them, and I joke about it because, like, I joke on the caveman when it comes to stats, and I learn. I can understand most of them now, but it's just kind of the it's who I am at this point. It's my shtick, but um, there's still a lot I don't understand, and I got you. you can use the player pages, and the, if the ones are there you can't understand, there's ones you can't understand, so it kind of molds together for you. It works. Well, uh, you got the percentiles and league averages to help. Exactly. Also, yes. everything has a tooltip. We define there every single stat. So if you don't know what the heck this is, you can just look at the tool. Yep, just look at the tool. I got you. And not, and not the one next to Nick on the screen, the one on the website. No. So go, okay. go check out all those things. A couple comments from the chat real quick. Marty saying this is an amazing in an hour. I have picked five in an OC. I'm happy to have my pitching taken care of. So no. pressure's on. No, Nick no, 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 no. Wait until like, the fifth <laughs> round. No. I know. I think he's talking about his whole draft. He's got it taken care of now with you here. And then Jeff Johnson says the craft is great. So hmm. he's pretty, pretty pumped. Thanks so much for that. listening, Jeff. I mean, I just yeah. feel so touched that I get to do a podcast with you. You know, it blows my mind every time. Like, yep. I hope it comes out in the show, but I'm just fanboying like all of you. <laughs> oh, I, I remember when it's you so mentioned fun. this that to me at FPAS, like the look on your face. If, if I could have take saved a picture of just that look when you just said, guess what I'm going to do? And it oh was just oh my god, amazing. <laughs> 
yeah. it's a dream. Yeah. Uh, we'll be, now, right before we we'll get started, right after this comment, Ryan Bloomfield <laughs> says, do I get to heckle Nick Pollock? Roles reversed. You do. Good luck, Ryan, because your heckling is going to be, I don't know. I just feel so like you it's know, he's up par. Okay, you got to so bring you know, it. He, he has access to the stream yard. He can jump in at any moment. <laughs> so don't tempt him. I didn't interrupt you, Ryan. <laughs> I wanted to, though. All right. Let's have some fun. You're talking some starting <laughs> pitching. And uh, the, the the first thing I want to mention is you've always been, uh, since I've known you at least, a person that likes to wait on pitching. I already joked, like, hey, wait yes. till round five or whatever. Like, wait, wait, wait on pitching. With 2024, with the landscape we're seeing, there's like, you know, Strider. Then there's this really strong crop. Then there's a bunch of like kind of pockets or globs if you're sport or whatever. How do you attack the 2024 SP player pool? Yeah, it's the same old strategy. Actually, I would say it's emphasized more than ever this year. Uh, I feel like in the past, at least we've seen, okay, there's like six guys that are, oh my gosh, amazing. Mm -hmm. You want to say things about Strider, go ahead. But I mean, I think you'd agree with this, Bubba. The hitting class is really what matters more when you make these decisions. Yes. It's not about the starting pitchers. It's about, well, if I do go for a starter, am I going to be okay making up for that later with hitters? The first four rounds of hitters are just so much better than the others. And you look at hitters and pitchers and you say, okay, cool. Who are the ones that stick out more? It's hitters. And I'm looking, I mean, I, I talk about this with Eric Smolsky all the time. It's like, I'm tempted just to have a feast of like my SP 40 through 70 guys. Like I, I feel like I could craft something like that, but fine. I need to get like one or two that are going to ensure me. I get those win totals and those strikeout totals. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm essentially saying fourth, fifth round. I'll go after it fourth round more on the later end. Uh, if that is, I'm, you know, the, the one through five picks in your 12 teamers means that the, the hitters that I feel like are a step above are not really there at the end of that so that I can take that start in the end of the fourth round and then maybe go for a hitter if I want in the fifth. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's generally the fifth round that I'm going to start looking at starting pitching. We're very similar. Very, very similar, like especially uh -huh. in especially in 12s. I've just loved that hitter. Like The start you can get That's if right. you can get four, four hitters, it's just oh. like glorious. Fine. Because there's so many pitchers I like. I know we're not getting the quote-unquote elite arms but i think if you start pounding those next sections like a two or three or whatever you there can are some put really together. undervalued ones 100 yeah. percent, yeah, yeah. so we're on the same page so that kind of makes you feel good that i'm on the same page as a list, <laughs> as a list you're listening to the right the people way. clearly as Nova, list. you know we're all, i forgot to mention this is list on the screen next to me not Nick you know the, yeah they the say list. like hey are you on the list and i say i am the list there's prince there's share oh, and there's gosh. list so oh, just gosh. remember these things. You no, know, right I fixed here. that. I really did fix that. <laughs> like I signed up. This is the reason they're saying this, by the way, guys, is because I was on um the TGF, sorry, not TGF, yeah, the NFBC website. And I originally signed up as like a business account. <laughs> so I just made my name pitcher, first name, and the last name list. That's amazing. And then I realized when I signed up for TGFBI that I had it as pitcher list. And I actually had to email them and say, Can you please change my name to Nick Pollock? Thank you very much. But it didn't change for TGFBI. So it just shows up as a list. And then Danielle Salinger is like, oh, Nick's a diva now, which yeah. I will sure embrace for that joke. But what's kind of funny to me is that the draft room didn't really internalize that I was a part of the draft. And I do it with uh, Bloomfield here. I do. Uh, yeah. it's, it's the same with Colette. It's with Ray Butler. It's with Mike Gianella, Ray Murphy. And Justin told me he randomized it this year, which is why mm. it's like we have the League of Death. Yep. But they didn't realize it was me. So I got Cole Reagans at the end of the fifth round. And it was so beautiful. Thank you, List. Never would have happened any other way. Not a chance. So that was no a, way. I had I had to throw that jab out there because that, that's just hilarious. Like, don't I wish you did, <laughs> I wish you didn't change it personally. Like, I mean, you guys go have it now forever if you really want it. Right? See, I didn't know it was you until List yeah, took Reagan, yeah, says yeah. Ryan Bloom, Bloomfield. Amazing. Bloomfield, not the giveaway. Dead giveaway. Round five. It all came to fruition. <laughs> didn't even need didn't need Sherlock Holmes for that one. Just damn. All right. Let's talk about some pictures now. We have a ton of awesome listener questions, so we'll get to all the ones that you guys have sent that I, at least we should get to all of them. I'll do my best to get to all of them before it's over. But I have a list of pictures that I, I kind of went off of Nick's. Obviously, go to pitcherlist.com. He has his top 400 out there. It's really cool, though, because – there's just a, a list of 400 at the end of the article or, or a list of X amount. I only went through 100 because we don't need to go super deep here. 
or there's articles doing like 20 at a time so you can kind of get yeah. the whole shebang of we it all. learned yeah. we learned our lesson yeah sarah you understand where the name of the site comes from i'm you know it's yep, yep, yep. It's, it's, it's a picture list it's oh this is literally what happened when i say sarah's name um it, i think siri is exists so oh that's amazing you just got that yeah it's amazing sarah um, sanchez siri they both know it all so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> all oh, right man. let's talk pictures let's talk pictures yes. kevin gaussman uh, and, and the, a lot of these questions are going to kind of link into how you view spring training stuff because there's mm. information you have to weed through the information in spring training so gaussman's got the shoulder issue but he's already thrown yep. which is good he's playing catch i should say he's i love it in that regard what it. are you doing and if you were to draft this weekend how are you approaching kevin gaussman right now i am so, okay if there's one thing i love about march drafts it's seeing the red next to their name. Yeah. Think about Zach Wheeler and Zach Gallen in 2022. They 100%. both had this designation and just had amazing seasons after it. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing you want that designation to be is shoulder soreness. And I know you're thinking, what? Nick, I'm shoulder very, injuries very are the worst. Yeah. Shoulder capsule injuries are the worst. Shoulder soreness, that's literally just like, oh, I didn't ramp up fast enough. We see this all the time. This is not structural damage. This is not the actual thing we get terrified about. This is a guy that just needs to slow down a little bit and ramp up. So Gaussman might miss like one start, maybe two. But then you get the ace that was a top 10 starter before this. Yep. And if he still has his designation, you might see him just fall, 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 fall. All of a sudden to like the sixth round of your draft. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I'm super, super in on that. I think it's great news. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think I tweeted it out like the first week of spring when pitchers and catchers reported and so-and-so had a, a sore shoulder, a sore, he, he's just fatigued. I'm like, yeah, they all are. They're all going to say this. Or Somebody even tweeted it out on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday this week and said, how many of these like hamstrings, shoulders, or just guys like I'm fed up with spring training and I want to go play baseball? Like I just don't want to be here right now. Yeah. Who knows? But uh, I'm glad you're in on Kevin Gossman. Let's talk Yoshinobu Yamamoto. By the way, Miles mm. Nelson taught me the best way to say the name because I'm a you know dumb dumb. Yoshi, the the sushi restaurant Nobu. It's a perfect combination, and it's so easy once you try to not overthink. Wait, Nobu's a, a sushi restaurant. Uh, yeah, it's world class, Nick. World class. Yeah, you know, oh, picture okay. list will probably be having their Christmas party there in a few years. Once I don't know. In, I'm not. Time. I'm not the okay. I don't really do fish at all. Really? So, yeah, okay. I know this is a thing about me. It's okay. I didn't uh, like sushi until I was like almost, you know, 28, 29. Well, sushi I can do okay with, but like just oh, fish and Nobu general. sounds wonderful. I'm glad that everyone else enjoys it. I've never been. And, uh, would love to go. Never been. Well, I'll talk to my people. Okay. You, you talk to your and people. And they'll say I'll no. Talk to my, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. That's, for 40 years now, mine have said no as well. So it's okay. Um, but Yoshinobu Yamamoto uh, yeah, great first start. Second start a little suspect, but again, I'm not overly concerned here. In general, though, what's your your outlook on Yamamoto? Because the first start pushed his ADP way up, so now you actually have to pay a premium for him if you like him. That's interesting. I I, I imagine the premium was kind of there before. I didn't know how much you know better than I do about like NFBC ADP. How much that's changed? Mm -hmm. Um. I've actually came out and said I uh, my rankings are updating on Monday for the first time officially. I was thinking about doing them last week, maybe this week, and both times I'm thinking there's just too much that's kind of too unknown yet. It's too quick to make judgments. But I need to make something. I need to say, like, look, this is where we are, and that's going to be next week, and I'm pretty much going to do it each week after. And even since that February 1, I've already said multiple times that I am going to lower Yamamoto a little bit before even spring training. And really, that just comes from how dominant is he actually and the 150 inning cap that is not just made up, that is legitimate in many ways. And then I see these two starts. I finally am able to watch them. Terrible camera angle. I just want to mention really, really bad. I cannot assess them in the same way. It's low. It's to the right. I don't really get a good feel for a lot of the stuff. But I do know his approach at the very least. And I can watch that that White Sox start where yes, he did get unfortunate. He did get some bad dunks and whatnot. But he also was not the command guy that we want him to be. Also, his forcing or command, or really his approach from the first one and this one, pretty consistent. And I don't like it. 
Uh, it's mm -hmm. not this big, overpowering, bullying four-seamer that we want it to be. It's a good one, but it's not unhittable. It's not this ridiculous four-seamer. I like Max Fried's four-seamer more because he spots it better. So I'm a little bit down on Yamamoto. I'm going to probably have him closer to like the 18-19 range, um, which has me out likely on Yamamoto. I'm going to be more in probably on Bobby Miller, believe it or not. Uh, uh, because I think the overall raw stuff of Bobby Miller is better and uh, similar command. So I know that's going to make me completely miss out on Yamamoto this year. I also really do believe, I mean, we saw it last year with saying we see this constantly. There is some transition period with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that he's going to be bad after the transition period, but how much better is he going to be to after it to make up for it, right? Yep, so all 100%. these things combined is just why go after Yamamoto? Just, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not doing it. So I'm pushing him down yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I'm all. with you. The, the knob in the chat says 150 innings cap question mark. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Um, Bobby Miller, Adam's on board with you there. Um, one thing with Yamamoto that it kind of always worried me is it seems like the Dodgers are even concerned with the workload because they want to put a six day rotation in, not a six man, a six day rotation and give them that extra day to keep them on that you know, Japanese schedule per se, but yep. you want the, the ADP, this is where you said you have about 18 or 19, you think um, just over the last week in NPC OCs, 12 team leagues. If you don't count Shohei Otani, cause he's not a pitcher. He drives not a pitcher. Right. Yamamoto is the fifth pitcher off the board. That's no way. Fifth. His ADP is 32. So that's a two, three turn. He's got as high as 20. He's got as high as 23rd overall. I mean, all it takes is one person, right? Yep. Yep. It's it's a tie though. It's steep. He, it, and when he first signed, he was like the 16th or 17th pitcher. And literally, it's yeah. just been. I mean, I, I I had him when I did an update. I originally had him at like 24. And there's a part of me that's like that kind of still sticks. Yeah. But we'll, we'll talk more about that. I, I don't know exactly where I'm going to land on it. Uh, but we'll get more into some of the guys around that range. And uh, honestly, it's. I don't know. There are times that you want to chase the mystery box and times that you don't. And generally, early in drafts, you don't. Yeah, I'm with you. The early drafting is a dicey situation. What isn't well, dicey, yeah. and someone that will not be ranked around Yoshi Nobu <laughs> Yamamoto, is Cole Reagans. Um, oh, man. First off, the first rankings, I'm guessing he'll go higher in the next yes. rankings. I had Cole Reagans because he had 14th question mark. Just kind of surprised. Like Adam uh, is in the chat, uh, was asking about Cole Reagan's top 10 pitcher. You uh, you he hinted it on the pod. So, you know. Well, I think, like, he, I think quick, he's going to be 11th. Real quick. And I want to mention this too before I give you the floor. This one was really funny. It's not, you're, the people love you. Like, let's put it that way. Um, the knob says the one stack cast stadium in Arizona today was supposed to be Cole Reagan's, but it got rained out. Cause oh so God. Cole Reagan yeah. threw, um, he threw up like underneath for a three inning simulation underneath. So we won't see him again for five days, basically. With all that being said, what's your thoughts on Reagan's this year, Nick Bollock? Well, first of all, I'm so upset and I will do everything I can to get some information to see how he's doing. Um, but I, Cole Reagan's is great. He's a unicorn. And I think there's something that gets lost a lot. I, I, um, I get sent things from various people I know of like, hey, this is something that like people are talking about you, which is a very weird thing to be in. And I kind of like tell people like, Hey, don't do that. I don't it's really want to so know humble. And you want to accept the fact that you know, like, I don't, I actually are. think I act better. Not hearing the noise of the public a lot of like a lot of times, just like really negative stuff, you know, or it's like criticisms that are just, just get me emotional when I don't need to focus on it. And um, the reason I'm bringing it up now though, is because, I I want to at least try and clarify a lot of the reasons why I'm in and how my process goes, right? And like, again, I don't care about quoting ERA and WHIP and and things of, of, of old three, last three years, everything like that. That is not my process. If you notice in all these write-ups, I generally just don't quote those. I quote their arsenal. And what I've been able to do, well, at least I try to as best as I can, is to say, okay, based on the pitches he throws, 
and what my assessment is of his command, this is the general performance of it. It's kind of funny to me how much we spend on like this guy versus that guy when it's just generally they're the same thing. Like, who knows? Who cares? They're like the same kind of thing. And Reagan's to me, I find him so special because he has so many pitches that are all so well commanded and utilized correctly. That is, he is squeezing the best version out of so many of these. I mean, four seamers at like upper 90s hitting over 100 with more vertical break than he did last year is just what? That is a whiff heavy four seamer that he tries to get upstairs and not downstairs. That's great. It's a cutter that he uses inside to right handers and surprises them and eats them alive. That's great. A slider he keeps exclusively glove side. That is both to right handers and lefties. That is great. A curveball he throws in the zone. For strikes, fantastic, and a changeup that had a 25% swing strike rate because he throws it correctly down and away to right. He's like, this is the perfect Frankenstein pitcher. This is a unicorn. You don't see this. So I see criticisms of, you know, it's only this amount of innings. I see things talking about his injuries. Only like <sighs> all this stuff is just, no, he was a reliever for the entire year. Like, uh, sorry, for the first half of the year, and then a starter. He was not injured last year. And there is not a question of stamina at this moment. It is not. Don't don't just put all the innings together. It's not the same. Uh, you have uh, his injury history, which was just one and a half Tommy Johns. He even said it himself because he got Tommy John. And then it wasn't done right. And he said, instead of trying to push through this, I'm going to just get it done right once. So he missed like four years. He was also a super highly touted prospect before he went through Tommy John. Like there's all these elements that make sense to it. And just watch the guy. Mm -hmm. a, a scout was saying that he's the left-handed to Grom. Like, that, that's yes, I feel that, you know, it, it's, it's bonkers to me. And the thing about it, he's going to go every five days. And this is something I've been, I was saying a lot in Florida was when it comes to inning assessments, ask yourself two questions. Is he going to be limited in the sense of, is he going to go every five days for this team? Then ask yourself, is he going to be allowed to go six innings consistently? If the answer is yes, that's 180 innings and 30 starts, right? Sure, if you want to say it's 170, fine. But that's how you should be treating innings. And if you feel that a team is going to purposefully institute a cap, then that's one thing. But in most cases, look at a team and say, wait, hold on a second. The Mariners just let Logan Gilbert and uh, George Kirby go, even though they threw like 120 or something. Right. Because they weren't going to replace them. They weren't just going to stop. Cole Reagans is not going to be limited. Anyone that wants, us, wants to say 140 innings. Why? Because he got one and a half Tommy Johns? Because he's throwing hard? I don't, you know, then why isn't Spencer Strider limited? You know, like why is it? It's just. He's amazing. Go get him. Cool. <laughs> Well, there you go, Matt Blau. Your question about how many innings, 170 to 180. There you go. Have some fun with that one. Um, and that's an ace is going to ace type situation. Um, oh, yeah. It, you it's, can't it's spell Reagan's name. without AGA. Exactly. I had to throw it out there for you. And what's beautiful, Nick mentioned he got him in the the, the end of the fifth round in TGFBI. Yeah, it's a 15-team league. In 12-team leagues right now, is ADP 76. Like, he's very is affordable. Is he really 76 in 12-teamers now? Yeah. he's the. I remember 30... when it was 110 and I was going – Oh, oh he's, my he's gosh. creeping people, up. Yeah, he's creeping people up. People get it. Yeah, not it just me. Well, it, and it's this time <laughs> of the year. It's this. It's, well, it's this time of the year with the spring training performances. Innings. People are all excited about it, and it, it gets wacky out there. Yeah. All right. I get it. It's fun. That's not wacky though. He should no, be there. They should be. Well, let's talk about well, this and tell guy. it to Jason Collette, please. Oh my gosh, Jason, he took twenty-one dollar Framber Valdez over eighteen dollar Reagans, and I'm never gonna let him. Ooh, it. That'll be fun. I'll remind. I'll remember that when I have Jason back on. That'll be. That'll be good. <laughs> um, let's talk Tyler Glass now. Yeah. We we know the skill set of Tyler Glass now. Very very good. But we also know there's is a history of you know innings concerns at times. What's your thoughts on Glass now this year? Because the biggest reason I ask if you do like Tyler Glass now, his ADP as I scroll even higher to get like to Glass seven. now, it's 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 wild. It's uh it's thirty six. He's the eighth pitcher off the board. Yeah. So what the heck? <laughs> uh, 
this is the thing I talk about is like the inconsistencies. I don't know. I mean, I get it. Glasnow is going to have higher wind chance. That makes sense. There is a lot more concern with Glasnow's health than than with Reagan's. Uh, I, I would absolutely put a wager that Reagan's going to get more wins than Tyler Glasnow this year. Like just based on the fact that he'll he's expected to get more starts. Like, I, I don't I don't know. I think it's I think it's wild to me. Um, I'm going to have them like slightly close. Like Reagan, uh, Reagan's going to be like 11 and then Glasnow's going to be like 13. 14? I don't expect to have them. I think it's too binary for my tastes. Uh, I I often say the um, the thing that you should really, as much as possible, focus on when it comes to starting pitchers for your drafts. If there's one, there's just one thing that you have to think about when you draft and let's ignore everything else. You want to draft command pitchers with good floors who also have SP one or two ceiling. And you want to and you say that you hear that and you go oh duh, but then like George Kirby was the 25th pitcher off the board last year, yeah right and like that's the perfect example of it. So when I look at it this year, that's Bobby Miller to me. Um, that's such a good floor with that ceiling. Reagan's is that to me, right? And Tarek Skubal, honestly, I'm more convinced now. One of the biggest worries I had and originally worked uh, put him at 25th uh, because I just didn't know if the velocity would hold up. I didn't know if the, the fast will be as good, all this kind of stuff. I watched him twice. He's sitting 97 now instead of 95 and 96. Like, okay, Tarek Skubal, you're dope. We get it. Like, he's a top 15 now. Right now, I believe he's in that realm. So, Are you not worried about Skubal's innings? Why would I be worried about Skubal's innings? I'm just asking. I know you just gave the Cole Reagan speech. I'm assuming. You think, that the, you think the Tigers are going to stop him throwing every five days? I'd hope not, but it's the Tigers. Well, no, but really I mean, I, I guess that's what I'm getting at is like, Mm-hmm. No, they're not going to stop him. Okay. Right? They shouldn't. Right. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that's the only answer I can really give. I think the hardest thing we do as analysts is predict innings and yes. volume. And it's the most annoying thing ever. And uh, we have to do it. And uh, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, is he going to go every five days? Do we think this team is going to limit them? No, they're not going to limit school. Okay. Well, Jeff Johnson, that answers your question about Tariq Skubal right there. Nick's just pounding away at the questions here. Tarek. Tarek. Yeah, Tarek, sorry, Tarek. With a T. Tarek. Sorry, Tarek. Sorry, he, he expressed Tarek. to us explicitly how he doesn't like that. So oh, really? I'm as hard as I, I can. Apologize. Now. I apologize. I will do my best. <laughs> I'll bet I'll do my best to not be Eno Saris and pronounce names correctly as best I can. <laughs> and that is a joke, folks. I'm not taking a dig at Eno Saris. Hey, Christian Yalik <laughs> is the, my favorite. <laughs> yes. Well, he said one on the craft with you, and you had this uh, about the wiggle. But it was oh, uh, Miggle. It's time, time of Miggle. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I started laughing. Me. The wiggle. Yeah. I was like, it's like I'm I sorry. Laughing. The wiggle. Oh, good. God bless you. Know. <laughs> um, we're gonna jump around here because Sarah Sanchez has a question, and I'm looking forward to this. Uh Shoto Monica struck out five and two and a third innings and gave up three hits, including a home run. It was like all of our hopes and dreams and fears all in one. What do you see from Shota versus the Dodgers? Um oh, man. I know you what? have Shota. You 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 came into a podcast of mine recently, basically pounding the drum for Shoto Monica. So um, the floor is yours. I uh, of course Sarah is going to ask a Cubs question. I got of course, you. Sarah, don't don't naturally. fret. I'm actually I watched Justin Steele from yesterday, and I love the fact that he had the tidbits about him working on his changeup and sinker. I think that was great because I saw him throw a changeup. I was like, <gasps> a third pitch, a good third oh, pitch. No, maybe? but just like you need something that goes the other way, and that does. And that was so, <laughs> so lovely. Uh, and hearing and the chat quoted you on it, and it was great. Um, I'm actually raising up Justin Steele in my rankings. Justin Steele. I haven't set up oh, my soundboard love, yet. Oh, I, I would put Steel. it in. I could do that. I would next time. Next time I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I was so with Imanaga, though. I, I'm a huge fan. He did allow that home run to, to, to Pajes. It was a low four-seamer down and in. And he didn't want to do that. He wants to get that higher up. So what to know quickly about Imanaga is that he has a very flat four-seamer, which is great, and also has good IVB. But if it's flat, that means it's actually a detriment for him to throw low. Essentially, it's matching the bat path better if it's a flat one. Um, that's a flat arm angle. And when I say like a high, height-adjusted VAA, that means it's a, it's a flatter angle. So it soars upstairs. The things I've seen from him are that he does lean upstairs. He had five strikeouts. It looked great. He is going to allow some home runs. That is going to be a thing. I don't think this is going to be like the Matthew Boyd uh, 
Robbie Ray's of old of just or like nowadays is Hunter Green of like lots of strikeouts, high ERA. No, I don't believe that. Um, I think Imanaga has better command than those guys and a better arsenal. So I think it's going to be some learning curve as I have my draft noise. I don't know if you just heard that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got to make a pick in my game team league. It, they can wait. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Imanaga, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of him. Probably going to have him around 35 in my ranks one day. Yep, he's a 66th pitcher off the board right now. So <laughs> that's long. Yep, yep. And uh, Ryan made fun of me plenty on the tout stream. I got him on on the tout draft. I wanted him, and I kept waiting and playing chicken. It felt like, and I finally no. you know, made it happen. So we're good. You did it. You got him. Oh, I got him. I got him. We should have made fun of you then. You did the right thing. Right. Well, he made fun of me because I brought him up like two rounds earlier. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I really want him. So like, I'm trying to figure out when to take him. Like, yeah. this is the game we play. And but uh, we by the way, live, we talk. Sarah, uh, I know the curve. The curve doesn't matter to me. The change of that matters to me because the curve matches the same plane of the slider. The slider is like, actually, we looked at our stuff numbers. We have a new PLV stuff plus coming out. I heard a rumor um, that on this episode of The Craft. Yes, we were. Yeah, we were working on that because we understand that we, we want to be able to separate it out to showcase what elements of PLV matter and stuff. And I. Uh, Justin Steele's slider is like top five. So I, I actually really surprised me. Um, and that, that is just a steel supporter bit. since the beginning. It doesn't surprise me. Well, I mean, I'm just kidding. He still allows too many hits. <laughs> He's a lot of contact. He needs that defense. That's him. not good. And Christopher Morrell's defense at third base does not look great right not now. Not good. And I love Christopher Morrell, Sarah. So don't come at me. I want Christopher Morrell to play every day. Just uh, looked a little rough there uh, the other day. Oh, back foot, back foot knobs. Oh, man. The slider. Yeah. Yeah, the slider is the thing is that. Entering last year, I was like, oh, the slider's legit, but the fastball isn't. And the fastball's really a cutter is the thing. So if he can continue to spot and make the seven, that is the attack in the top of the zone and then inside the righties. So if you're looking at it from TV, he makes a seven with the zone. He can do that, and that's cool. As I hold my 20-ounce Shane McClana fan mug. That's awesome. That's awesome. Nick Pollock, everybody, doing his thing. All right, I want to ask you about Kyle Bradish. We, uh, Bradish, mm. awesome year last year, obviously. Pretty uh, not great injury, the way I look at it. He's got an ADP of 317 right now, so 12-team leagues, like one of your last picks. What are your thoughts on this whole injury situation with Bradish right now? I mean, I wanted to get him for a dollar in labor, then Justin Mason took him for two. So then I nominated after Lucas Giolita for one dollar, and Justin Mason went for two. <laughs> so, yeah, how, how do you feel now, Justin? So then I got Louis Barn for one, and then, then Carlos Mercado and, and Mark Northen took him for two. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got Tristan McKenzie for one and no one said anything. Okay. Um, but Ooh. Kyle Bradish, I mean, I think he's a great stash at this point. Um, I wouldn't go too far into it, but my assessment is like six weeks or so from the start of the year. So like May 15th or so, May 30th. I'm hoping for the best. We've seen this before where the guys recover. I hope it works out. It's a filthy slider. I hope he's using his four seamer better. Um, but I uh, yeah, it's it's concerning. I don't I don't have the opinion right now that he's going to get Tommy John because he would have already. Yeah, I, I every single that. moment that he misses right now is later into 2025. True. So if True. he really felt that he should get it, they would have gotten it right away. Yeah, it's a good point. Good point. Let's hope so at least. But uh, mid May, early June. Yeah, if you can stash, I guess it's not bad because he was that darn good. It's, it, it, because he's on the IL, it's better than like your general prospect one. True. Um, very good. Right. Yeah, you don't want to do it like in the 14th or something like that. Just you, know, you need you need to get value now, right? Away. In in game pick, in game pick. If he falls to the end, yes, go for it. Um, Joe Musgrove. I'm curious about this one for you because I love Joe Musgrove. Last year he came back after you know the toe injury from lifting weights. Kids, you don't need to lift weights. It's the bottom line. Um, I'm joking. Okay, joking, no, let's stop joking. right now. I'm joking. absolutely lifting weights is great. What I wish I, I did it. I was being sarcastic. Oh, I guess more of a joke to you. <laughs> um, but uh, then he comes back, looks pretty good, and then he starts doing the velo dip, and he's got the you know the fatigues and this soreness. He's got stuff going on. And he becomes more of a pitcher, like he's just grinding through the innings and doing it. But obviously, not a hundred percent. You have him ranked rather high, top twenty. Oh, are, I, I are mean, you I don't... buying into this with Musgrove? Yeah, he's healthy. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I think this is actually one of the best picks you can make. Really? I'm right now at value. Joe Musgrove is just so well, he is a great consistent. floor guy. I can give you that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's always a 24% K rate too, and it's okay. not like he's a floor guy like 20%. 
I I also actually believe that he can get more than a 24% K rate with what he throws. And I think there's a little bit too much of a lean on sinkers and four seamers. And uh, I dig the guy. So, yeah, I, it's, it's it's kind of funny. It's like a really bad dead zone four seamer. Mm-hmm. But as Zach Afflin has shown us, you can have one of those. And if you just save it for the right moment and keep it away from the middle of the plate, you can have success for it with it regardless. So, yeah, Musgrove, I think, is one of the more consistent arms out there. And the fact that he's going much later than like 20th or so. Like I've been yeah, getting right, right, like 70th right, right round easily. Yeah, he's the 82nd. Or no, that's Kota Singa. I'm looking at he's next we're talking about. Nah, we're uh, not going to. Musgrove, Kota Musgrove's Singa, just four, like 44th. 404th. Yeah, 101st Singa, no, no, we're not. We're not well, what I want to ask about Kota Singa, since just real quick, his ADP is 212. You had Bradish at 317. I'd Could rather have him? Bradish. There you go. There's the answer to my question. All right. Now what I'm very, very excited to hear about because – I have been pounding the drum for you, Darvish value all drafts. Oh my gosh, yes. So because in. his ADP is 186, he's the 75th it's pitcher ridiculous. off the board. I'm like, this is awesome. He could be like my SP five or six, even. And I'm like, I'll take my gambles there. Still, still striking guys out. Just had his hiccups. Fine. You yeah. have him ranked, at least in your previous rankings, 31st. So you're pretty high on him as well. He's gonna be around there again, yeah. 30th so what are you so. thinking when you see you Darvish? You know, he's getting older, but I'm still optimistic. Apparently, you are I, too. I see you, Darvish, as a guy who has so many pitches and shouldn't. Um, I've been really vocal about, hey, Darvish, buddy, please just take your four and make those as good as possible. And honestly, what I saw in the spring is him doing that, leaning more into breaking balls, saving fastballs appropriately. Um, I love it. I think you, Darvish, is someone who gets overlooked despite the fact that he consistently has high strikeout numbers and really low whip rates. And, uh, yeah, you should really like this. All right. I'm really looking forward to this part because this is another part of the discussion on another show I was on recently, and Nick was in the chat. This pitcher has an ADP of 115. Explain to me why Tanner Bybee shouldn't be that good. Because I oh, am, God. I used I your tools, your PLV tools, to prove that he should be good. So why don't no, you, you don't don't, don't tell me what to do? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tanner Bybee. Um, there are actually a lot of reasons to like Tanner Bybee, but yeah, if you want to use the tools, great. Go to his four seamer. Oh, his four seamer is hey. dreadful, dreadful. Well, yeah, there you go. So why would I pitch mix change? He's got two really, really, really good pitches. Sure. So what you're telling me. <laughs> Is that no, 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 this is good. So we start off by saying, Hey, look, he has a really bad four seam. It's horrific. Right? Yes. It's 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 a dead zone. It he tries as much and as he, he can. He uses it that too work. much. It's great. Way too much. So then use my pitchless tools, my wonderful player page. Yep. Tell me the locations of his uh slider and his changeup. Yeah. And tell me what kind of low lock he has on those. I don't see that. That's where, you, that's where that's where you're not speaking my language anymore. That's why that's deep stuff. So can you explain that to us and explain to why Absolutely. I need to know these things? So <laughs> I uh, what I did is when making these player pages, instead of just like looking at heat maps all the time, mm-hmm. which can be really annoying and like discerning, like this is this normal, is it's not. I said, you know what, we have this data. Let's just separate the strike zone into high locations and middle locations and low locations inside and out as well. And we have percentiles and averages on it. And it's pretty intuitive that with a changeup that falls down, you want that to be of low location. Right, you want that to be in the bottom of the zone or beneath the zone. Same with the slider. Tanner Bybee does not do this with his changeup. He, it gets in the zone a ton, and the slider. Watching so much of Tanner Bybee is not a precision pitch. There are times he executes it, yes, and it's effective and it worked. I've seen this stuff in the past where a guy has a somewhat smaller sample and has some success with those two pitches they are not surgically executed and it drives me up the wall and when you don't have a fastball to lean on that means you have to rely on these bad locations still being good enough in the locations again and i don't believe that now it's possible that turner bybee improves those next year to to um, stave off the expected regression and I still think he's going to be good. Like I have him in my top 40. Okay. You know, it's not like I, I'm like, hey, Tanner Bybee's horrific. I would rather have you Darvish. 
a lot of people disagree with me. Okay. So um, wow. that means I don't have Tanner Bybee anywhere. Okay. I like, I still have Bybee ahead of Darvish. I like Darvish a lot, though. I'm fine with that. Um, I'll have to look. I, I, don't, I pulled up the player page. I'm, I'm peeking around at it. It's people need to check this out. It's ridiculous the amount of stuff you have on here. And ridiculous in a good way. I'm saying, um, yeah, because I, I pulled up a slider picture, a, a GIF of him uh, throwing his slider, and then all your other, you know, locks and all that stuff that I have no idea what any of it means. So I have to well, learn I told all you, that the stuff. Loca- all, I know, LOC is I know, location. I know. I, we I'm give joking. you a percentile and an average. You can hover over any of the tooltip. I know. I'm joking with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the caveman in here. make it easy here. for you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. So go check it out, people. Uh, the knob mentions Gavin Williams. You know, I'm not, question mark? I'm not necessarily disagreeing. Uh, I've actually, I had him, I've been really trying to figure out Gavin Williams because it, Gavin Williams is an extension boy. So he's, he's really good at getting far out with his, uh, that's a surfer guy far out. Um, far out, dude. and maybe I should just call him that surfers and, uh, cause they get far out. That's actually, update I'm the roster, you guys. Yeah. Let's go. Here we go. Roster, he's a surfer. Go. And, um, you want to ride the wave of these extension guys because, when you pair it with with velocity like Gavin Williams has, that means that this four seamer that isn't necessarily the most pristine located pitch still had a twelve percent swing strike rate on it. And I uh, then you have a slider and a curveball. The curveball had a sub fifty percent strike rate. Terrible. That should be better. I just I get a little worried that Gavin Williams didn't have that like fourteen percent swing strike rate on that fastball, and that the secondaries weren't these like oh my gosh look at. Right, they weren't those. That said, I think the second year development for a guy like Gavin Williams, who is more four seamer focused, generally means that you're going to have a better season. Like you generally get better with that season to season. When also I see mechanics that are not violent. Yeah. And Nick, why aren't you saying that about Tanner Bybee and him getting better? Well, because that's more secondary focused, and secondary locations are harder to adapt. This is what I've seen uh, in my day. So I'm going to give Gavin Williams a little bit more benefit of the doubt. I'm going to pull him away from my 50s, probably into that 40 range. Bybee versus Williams is really close with it's me. It's a good one, yeah. So I'll just take Williams. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look at my rankings, but I think I have Bybee like one or two spots ahead of Williams. I did initially. And a lot of that is because I trust James Anderson's discussion on young players. That I had him on to talk sophomore players. And he says, this year it's Bybee, long-term Williams will be ahead of him. And so it's kind of what you were talking about. It's like pretty much what you were saying. And I was like, I was letting you finish because <laughs> James Anderson, who knows a thing or two about prospects and whatnot. He says, does. Yeah, the development, it's just like one more year away, he said, before Williams kind of jumps him in, in, in all of it. So you nailed it. One thing I do want to ask you again is I'm going to take this kind of off the beaten path for a second. What? You mentioned extension, surfers, hang 10, whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> like. And here, here's a question I have because you and like Eno and you and Spore, pretty much all you really smart pitching people, you you and Eric on your show and everything, you mentioned extensions, you mentioned, you know, these different, you have a ton of different terms. Third, IV, IVB. For, yes, and, IVB, and all the things. Yep. Okay. These are all usable stats, obviously, but for, you know, the average person, the common person, A, it doesn't have a lot of time to dig that deep and just other factors. How important are these stats? Like really, really to, that was so important. to do it. I know they're um, important. I'm going like to going I'm going to put something in uh, the private chat here. Okay. There and uh, this is an article I wrote for FTN. It was their guide. There's also an image uh, that uh, I put inside of it that hopefully you can. Oh my gosh, no, that is terrible. Um, uh, geez, there's a YouTube feed. Oh my gosh, pictures. this is what is this link? Middle? Why? Is this I not a good link for me to? No. Okay, you can you can figure out how to load that. <laughs> okay. uh, but there's an image I put, which is a cheat sheet for understanding these what I call the Fantastic Four. You get it? It's four things and Fantastic Four. Well patterns. done. Okay. Okay. Um, extension is really easy to understand. Like the closer you get to the plate, the less time the batter has to react. You want extension. Okay. The closer you get, harder it is to hit it. Cool. Awesome. Uh, one of them is velocity. You throw it harder, less time to react. Really, really important. Generally, if you can just make it so that they have no time to react, you're going to be great. Who cares about all the other stuff? Okay. That, that's literally it. The most important thing is reaction time. So if you limit that more. That's good. Then you look at IVB, otherwise known as vert. That is vertical movement. Your IVB, that's induced vertical break. 
It's different than vertical break that's on StatCast. So we have to say induced to make sure it's understood it's different. All that means is that the ball is always falling. How much does it fall? And does it fall less? That's good because that means it's rising. It looks like it's rising because it doesn't fall as much as the batter expects. So that's yeah. induced vertical break. Um, the thresholds you should think of, if it's at 16 or higher, that's okay, cool. That's like fine. If it gets to like 17, then you're like, oh, ooh. <laughs> and then like 18 is like, what? That's when you get bonkers, okay? Okay. Uh, and to when you think about it, if I, I'm going to get slightly more technical after I talk about height adjusted um, vertical approach angle. Vertical approach angle means as the ball comes into the plate, is it coming in like this, like straight line? Or is it coming in from a high like skyscraper scraper going down to the plate? Okay, okay? like an ephus or something. Okay. And when you think about this, when a batter swings at a ball in the zone, when they swing at a high pitch, it is a steep angle. It is like they're trying to hit a ball from a skyscraper. Okay, because that's just the bat path. It's not flat. It's from okay. it's, it's going up at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, let's just say. Then when it's low, however, it's a very flat uh, bat path. It's going mm -hmm. on, uh, going across the top of a table. So if you as a pitcher are throwing the ball at a release point that is lower, going straight, you are going to have generally a flatter angle to the plate. Okay. And that means that the ball that is low and it's flat is bad because you're matching that Some bat. Path. Which means yes. that the bat is in the same lane as the four seamer for a longer amount of time. It's a Tanner Bowie's problem, gotcha. Right. The and now if it's upstairs and you are steep, you are going to match that bat path again, right? Yes. So what you want is to be flat and upstairs because then it's gonna be a steep bat path, but then a flat ball, which means there's only like a small amount of time that they both intersect. And then if it's low, you want to be steep, you go against the flat bat path. You with me? I'm that's with what you. the whole VAA thing is. Yes. Now, okay. the problem, why we don't say just VAA is because that's the average of everything. And okay. when you throw the ball upstairs versus down low, you are going to have a slightly different angle just because it's lower or higher, right? Makes sense. To make this angle, it's just where I release the ball and then where does it land ultimately? Okay. So if it's lower or higher, you're going to change that angle slightly. Height adjusted actually really just means like the average of all of it. And so you put it in the middle and that's what it is. And the reason I use that one is because it gives me just a generalized idea of where this pitch would perform well. Okay. So when you see a one or above or a higher number, the higher number it gets, the flatter it gets. Okay. Okay. I know it's a little counterintuitive. And the lower number you get, so the closer to 0, 0.0, the steeper it gets. Okay. Okay. We want, we want flat. We want flat. So 1.0 or higher is okay. okay. And when I say that like 1.2, when you see 1.2, you're like, yep, this is going to work upstairs. When you see a 1.4, 1.5, you're like, oh boy, if this gotcha. guy isn't doing that, was he doing? No, you I say can't. Kikuchi has that. Okay. And I, it drives me up the wall. Extension. And height adjusted uh, VAA are more important than induced vertical break. If you have both of those, it doesn't matter what it is because the angle is just too good that there's just a small portion of time that they can actually time it. Okay. Zach Wheeler is a good example of this. He has low vert, low induced vertical break, which is like 14 and change or like 15, not that 16 and above. And yet it's one of the best four seamers in the game because he locates his upstairs. He knows what he's doing. He throws at 96. Who cares? <laughs> so we can even think about it this way. To get good vert, um, to get good induced vertical break, you have to get a lot of spin on the ball, right? That's what's going to create this vertical break a lot, a lot. Sometimes it seems shifted wake. Kind of throw that away just a moment. Just intuitively a good rule of this is that pitchers who throw over the top are going to have more induced vertical break. Why? Because when they release the ball, their fingers are right behind the baseball. And it's straight. And that means that the spin of the ball is going to be very much straight in a 12 o'clock is what we mean by that. Where the, the spin of the ball is going in the same direction as where the baseball is going. That's a spin efficiency of 100% because the spin is pointing in the same direction as the ball is going. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. If I am now on sidearm. 
I'm on the side of the ball now. The ball is going in this direction, but the ball is at a tilted angle. Different spin. Right? My wrist isn't straight because my arm is now tilted to the side. So that means the ball is not going to get as much induced vertical break because the spin is not 100% now. It's okay. not on top of the baseball, right? It's on the side of it slightly. Mm -hmm. Okay? That okay. generally means that you're going to get more arm side run because of it, but less vertical ride or vert or induced vertical break. Gotcha. Okay? So this is the general rule of thumb is that if you have a uh, a higher height adjusted VAA because you have a lower arm angle, which means you are lower, which means then you are going to have a flatter path, you often don't get that induced vertical break too. However, there are some guys that can release the ball just lower because they are shorter humans because they can bend down in their back foot and drive out instead of just keeping their arms straight up the entire time, that they actually have good VAA or height adjusted VAA and good vert. And that's ridiculous, Spencer Strider. How do you do this? Yeah. And he happens to have good extension and velocity. And it's like, this is the most ridiculous forcing, right? Okay. So that's those are the elements that we talk about with pitch shape. I just learned this like truly have my enlightenment with it in like October. Yeah. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I had no idea about this. This feels really confusing. I feel stupid. Don't worry. I did too. And everybody has these questions at some point. No. So that's if you one have thing any I more like questions video. about it, just tweet at me. Tweet at Kyle Bland, Blandalytics. We will take our time to explain this to you as much as possible because it's so important. It is completely reshaped how I think about pitchers and fastballs. It's not about velocity. It's about pitch shape and velocity. And it's why like Waskari Noah throwing 96, 97 doesn't matter. It's why Hunter Green's 101 is not the same as Zach Wheeler's 96, right? Yeah. It, it, it explains all of this. And so it's we're, we're, moving, we're moving on from, this. we're moving on from strictly velocity to more show. Like, I guess the I, actual, what the I pitch talked is. to a scout about it and he said one of the, you know, it makes him think that one of the worst things that ever happened to scouts were velocity guns. Okay. And I thought that, that was sense. such a fun, fascinating comment. Well, and that'll kind of segue me. And thank you for answering that. Cause I know like I'm not alone in that scenario. So I always like to be the person oh, to yeah. be the guinea pig on the show. I was the anybody same listening. Way. Like, here you go, people here. Like, and, and if you guys are just listening to this show, check out the YouTube. Like Nick was kind of doing things with his hands to kind of give you an idea of What's going on? I got I always got a baseball in it. Come yes, on, he's a, that's here's a the old pro. here's the old split that no one uses. <laughs> ah, Nick and his splitter. He had to get one of those in there. Um, but let's let's transition that to this because I saw you tweet about it. I think it was you I tweeted about it. Carlos Rodon had a rough start. Oh, uh, statistically, okay, had a rough start the other day, but he was still sitting around 92, 93 with the fastball, which is kind of what we somewhat expect with him no maybe no it's not i, I didn't know it's not think, Bubba. Okay, okay thank you because i thought it was higher i saw someone tweet out that all oh, 93 that's what we're used to with him i'm like that's not what you want no. to be used to. that's not what you want to be used to with him no so you're, we're used to 95.5 there you go okay good Answer we're not used question. to 92 93 but what that, I was is gonna like, say that is like pre-shoulder injury there you, go. you know like we gave up on rodan and then he showed up in 2021 with something ridiculous out of nowhere okay. like no, you were not supposed to do this. I put, I actually almost put out a tweet that was, I, I started it saying, I'm going to regret this tweet. And I realized, why would I put out a tweet that starts with that? Um, but it said, the Yankees wish they had signed Patrick Corbin when he went to the Nationals. They got yeah. their wish in Carlos Rodon. And it feels that, like that, that right now. That, that's a rich tweet right there. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I didn't do it. Okay. But it feels like that. And so you're, you're telling me an ADP oh, of 126 is not good for no, Carlos Rodon. So out. Give me Darvish. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. I'm with you there. I'm 100% with you there. Um, last picture. Look, look, it could happen. It could. It could all of a sudden be like, all right, I found it. It's back. We're great. I want to add there are two problems. It's that velocity is just not good. But we're not out of the woods of like him being healthy for the year. I'm 100% with you there. So we have two dings now. Stop this. Okay. Be now, smart. if he throw if he throws well, his next time out with better velocity, are you back intrigued? Oh, if he's sitting for four innings at ninety six, then I'm like, all right, great. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> I don't cool. expect that. Now he would have 
yesterday if he could have. So, okay. Uh, last player I'm going to ask you about, and I'm going to cut it off there because we do have a lot of listener questions, and I don't want to keep you here all evening long. Um, Chris, well, I do, but you have other things you have to do, and so do I. Uh, Christopher Sanchez, ADP of 220. It's Ryan's yeah. right hand man right now. Um, what he's a your, lefty. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Okay, his left hand man right now. Uh, what's your thoughts on Christopher Sanchez at huge ADP fan. 220? Huge, huge, huge fan. I have huge him inside fan. my top 50. Yeah, I, I, I wrote down 46. You had him is, uh, high up here. He, there is one worry that I'm, I'm, I know that I'm overlooking right now, and I'm like, it's eating me alive a little bit. And I'm, I, I, the in, interior Knicks are just battling. So it's like Alan Houston and Latrell Spearwell, the internal Knicks. Anyway, um, that's a 1990s New York Knicks joke. I got you. I got you. Uh, not anyone. Not everyone's got me too. Uh, <laughs> we, essentially, the problem here is that the sinker usage, or at least the, the locations of it, aren't ideal. Um, he gets too far inside to right-handers on it, or like he doesn't get inside enough. And the changeup is so good. Like, so good. But, and he mirrors it, the sinker with it well. But he needs something else. However, he is developing a cutter. And that's nice. I just want him then to take a sinker and not throw a glove side to lefties. Like, throw it inside to lefties, please. Why would you not do that? So there's still some tweaking to be done. But I'm a big fan. I think the changeup is one of the most underrated changeups in the game. So Beautiful. All right, we'll do some listener questions here. A couple from the chat first. Greg asks, Nick, best case scenario for Cody Bradford this year? Um, That he leaves camp with the SP5 spot. And he looks around being like, really? Like, you're letting me do this kind of like how every parent feels when they leave the hospital with their kid. There you go. That's a great analogy. Um, <laughs> a, a, a Adam Reckamp says, how tilting is the data or lack thereof data in Arizona ballparks during spring training? Adam, I mean, it's good to see Adam, but uh, it's it's the worst thing ever. I will complain Don't you know a guy now about that it. Could, could maybe push some buttons and hopefully get that fixed. Don't you know? Yeah, guy? right. Um, you no, know, the funny thing is, uh, I don't know who if it was mentioned on an episode of a podcast or not, or it was behind the scenes or whatever. There's talk about like teams not sharing. Sharing that was yeah. two episodes ago in a craft. We mentioned it. Okay, I didn't know if we I mentioned it on or yes. not. Yes, I thought that yes. was so fascinating. They're like, they're like very yeah. fascinating, right? And uh, this is why you guys got to listen to the craft, like the stuff that you know brings up at times. I'm just like, what? Because he even like, said, I think he even said at a point, like, I don't know if I should be sharing this, but let's talk yeah. about it. <laughs> this <laughs> is why I was so, hesitant to so even say anything. I was like, was this behind or was it yeah, not? So Eno fashion. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's really interesting of like, they don't want to put him through AAA because they don't want to give exposure to that guy. And it's just, stop, help me. Can I, yeah. Right, then I made the joke, like, want, can I just pay for it then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to know. Yeah, it would be nice. It Ugh. would be very, very nice, of course. All right, we'll try we'll try to rapid fire these for you because we have quite a bit. Our buddy Michael Simeone, SP streamer, says, "Oh man, what's up? How many times has Nick professed his love to Cole Reagans via DM?" Ha! <laughs> I. You know, it's kind of funny. I try as much as I can. I know you guys like know like how infatuated yeah. infatuated I get, but like with they're just humans. I'm not gonna be this. I'm not gonna I'm like. With, I'm with I'm you. I'm gonna treat them like people. I'm not gonna. I don't think I've even told him. I mean, I joked with him like the Reagan T-shirt and stuff, but I'm just you know, he's a person. Yeah, I try to do that. Even like uh, you can walk around, you know, the city, and I've run into like a Starbucks and a couple of giants have been in there before a game or something, like you know, hours before a game. And oh man, see like, on Barkley. <laughs> wrong the the good giants on the other coast i, I kind of nod i just nod at them and just kind of leave them alone everyone's like don't you want to get an autograph or something I'm like no i'm gonna leave them no, alone. No, they're, no, humans. they're getting coffee they're trying to be right. normal human beings right now just let them be right um so i i, I, was, I respect that he was a he was a really cool dude i mean i think he was talking about playing like fortnite or something i can't remember what it was no he was uh it was um rogue squadron oh. i think it was uh, looks, uh go. rainbow six rainbow six rainbow six Call, uh, that's Tom Clancy. Um, yeah. Ben Tid, a good buddy, asked during your Tout Wars live stream, Nick mentioned Johnny Brito as someone to draft. After watching him on the Yankees the last couple of years, I haven't been impressed with him. So I was curious what Nick has been seeing in him lately. I think he's going to be, um, I think it's going to be Brito and Waldron as the four and five for the Padres right now. Yeah. So what I see is, especially in those deep leagues where um, I mean, I threw a list of like the wa waiver wire guys who are people that actually could provide some value. The Padres are a good defensive team. 
And also on the right side, that's Tatis and Machado. When you have a guy who throws sinkers inside the righties, Tatis and uh, not Tatis, I apologize. Uh, that's uh, Kim, I believe, and and, and uh, Machado. I'm so sorry, hitters. Oh, I can't keep up. It's okay. Um, but uh, but you have a very good infield defense there, and that means that Burrito's going to just blink and get five innings against it with a team that actually still has a good offense. It's not like yep. the Padres are bad now with Bogarts and Machado and Tatis and Kim and Cronenworth. And like, this isn't a bad offense guys. They're going to win games and Brito is going to steal wins. So I was highlighting there just, Hey, these are some waiver wire guys to be aware of, especially for your deeper leagues, 12 teamers, maybe not so much, but that's a 15 teamer, I believe for your tout league. So yep. he should be considered. No, that's fair. Totally fair. Uh, Steve Brunn says, "Guys, who's your favorite post 300 ADP guy?" So one of your, oh, your last for yeah. one of your last round picks in like a twelve teamer. Who, who are you thinking? Two guys. That, <laughs> while you're thinking, two for me is either AJ Puck or Chase Silseth. Those are oh yeah, like well Puck all the time. Yeah, uh, I don't know what the ADP is on Cutter Crawford. Obviously, I'm in on that. Um, yeah, Garrett six. Whitlock it needs to Whitlock be drafted. Sure Tanner really Houck good. needs to be drafted because yep. apparently his velocity is through the roof. They were saying that his velocity jump was higher than anyone else in uh in Boston camp. Yeah, both both Whitlock, something. Whitlock and House you can get later. Crawford's up to 243 now. The hype train is in full effect with him. Is what is it now? 203? 243. That's not hype train. No, because it was much, much lower, is what I'm saying. I like know. It's, it's, yeah, it's but he should be in top two hundred. So Ooh, there we go. Nick bringing it. That's there. not spice. That's like I knew. all right. Talk to me in May first. <laughs> okay. I'll I'll be right in there. Okay. Everybody, Nick will be on the show in May. We'll recap this. Uh, early yeah, rankings. and I'll be like, okay, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we well, all, no, I think all, about all it also in 12 teamers, do. though. So a lot, a lot of things you're talking about 15 where you need to be a little yeah. more conservative. 12. But I'm I very much Crawford on the, the side of I know that I'm going to be wanting to pick up a lot of guys in April. So I'm like, great. Let me just get my guy and see how that's going. Wow. Um, so I absolutely am in on him. Puck was a good one. DL Hall's a good one. Yep. Um. <laughs> I'm really sad about the Caleb Killian um, shoulder News. injury, which is yeah. just so brutal. Uh, he was so fun. And it was also like he was like 1000th in ADP, which is the funniest thing ever to me. And like this was a guy that almost won the SP5 job, I think, for yeah. the Cubs. And no, no one knew. Ah, that, was so funny. that was a good one. Um, I should have I should have some better ones, though, for you. OK, um, let me see. Let me just pull the NFC ADP quickly. What's another question? Uh, next question, Colin, my shot says, I'm going to go real deep into the SP pool here. Based on what we've seen in spring so far, which of these four starting pitchers are you most impressed by? Okay. Who has the best combo of upside and opportunity? All right, Joe Boyle, me... Bowden Francis, mm -hmm. Casey Mize, Ronaldo okay. Lopez. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, I the most exciting one is Boyle. Yes. But, boy, can that guy not command a baseball and it's so it's gonna, funny to me it's gonna boil you inside on your nights you have to start hey oh i i just think of hey boil from uh from hades if anyone played that game go. every single time hey boil so it's so funny to me we got two games where we couldn't watch him mm -hmm. and what did we see it was like four innings of zero walks Yep. And I saw an article be like, well, this is how Joe Boyle fixes strikes. <laughs> and it's like four innings. We're going to talk about four innings. And so finally, I'm like, all right, you know what? He's on TV. I can finally watch him. I don't get stack. I say it's okay. I just want to watch him. Oh, three walks. Oh, his mechanics are so violent. Oh, he's just literally aiming down the middle of the plate and hoping for the best. <laughs> this is fantasy chaos. So when I think about my 12 teamers, no. I don't, I'm not going to get to a point where I could feel like Joe Boyle is going to be good enough, right? And maybe he does ultimately make himself worthwhile. I don't want to do it. So then look at the others that you mentioned. I I can't remember the second one, but there was, oh, Bowden Francis yep. is fine. I I think he will have an opportunity because I don't think it's going to be Alec Manoa. No. Curveball is good. The four-seamer has good shape. He's learning a splitter. I just haven't been wowed by him enough. And I need to watch more of him. And hopefully the next, next time he pitches, I can actually like really watch more intently. But I'm gonna I'm kind of out in the moment. I think the more intriguing ones are Casey Mize and Renato Lopez. My biggest fear is that Mize is not going to get a rotation spot because you have Reese Olsen and Matt Manning. And it's like obviously Matt Manning. I don't know why they even like threw in Matt Manning as not a starter. He's a starter. He's a He's starter. He's great. For sure. yeah. Um, and you should be really thrilled about him throwing 95. Casey Mize might not. 
I don't know. Reese Olsen's looking good now, and Mize is looking great. He has a four seamer now instead of a sinker, and the four seamer has apparently really good grades. So and he's a command guy. I'm very intrigued, and I hope he starts. And if he does, that's great. Renato Lopez, though, I would say has the best situation of all of them because Bryce Elder is the only one he needs to beat. And Bryce Elder, not great. Uh, it's his to lose, though. Yeah. And if Bryce Elder goes out in his next start, like four innings, zero and runs or something like that, it's not going to go to Raylo. It's going to go to Bryce Elder. And that's stupid and annoying. Raylo has a really good four-seamer shape. He has a slider that has gotten strikes in the past. It didn't last year. I hope it does. Um, that's more fun because it's Atlanta. You want yeah. guys who pitch for Atlanta. So I would rank them right now as Renato Lopez, Casey Mize, Joe Boyle, and Bowden Francis. And right. it's just the fact that like Joe Boyle is going to have a game of like five innings of eight Ks and two walks, and you're just going to deal with it. And then the next one's going to be like four and two thirds with like 300 runs and four walks and, and five Ks or something. And you're just like, why do I do this to myself? Yep, no that, wins in either time. That <laughs> happens a lot with our late picks. Um, Drew at Fru underscore Dorte asks, pick a favorite to draft between Pavetta, Hunter Brown, or Bryce Miller. Oh, that's so easy, Lee. Pavetta. Not yeah, close. Pavetta. The I, like, Birds, I, like all baby. Three, I like all three of them, but Pavetta, I'm with you there. Uh, Pavetta, definitely. Uh, Hunter Brown's a very interesting one. I don't think that he's going at the price that I would want him to go okay. because I don't think his four seamer actually is that great. It's good, but it's not this okay, this is the pitch that's going to take over. Which means that he needs to get more out of his his uh, cutter, really. It's not really that much of a slider. It's more of a cutter and his curve. And he didn't really show exceptional command to both of them. That said, it is the Astros who I want to believe are pretty decent at pitch development. Yes. They or seem or to at least be. like not bad at it, you know? Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, and the third one was someone that I wasn't really focused uh, on. There. Bryce Miller. Bro, oh, Bryce Miller, I'm going back and forth on. I'm going to have Bryce Miller above Hunter Brown. You mean you don't like I the I don't splitter? consider him a command guy. That What's that? You don't like the splitter, Nick? Oh, that's you're laughing. Why don't I like the splitter, Bubba? I'm being sarcastic. You don't like it as a secondary pitch, but it's not a secondary pitch for him. It's more of a third pitch for him. So it might be more valuable, I think. Well, it's supposed to be the number two pitch against the lefty. And that's the problem. He doesn't have a number two pitch against lefty right now. But maybe, and that's will. the one thing I want him to fix. If that was his third, it could actually be a really good thing as another put away offering. Okay. Like, that's great. But the problem for me with Bryce Miller is as four seamer gets demolished and is really bad against lefties, you can actually check that. Guess what? On our player pages, oh. you can do splits of lefties and righties. And I highly recommend doing that because pitchers are different against right handers okay. and left handers. And great news about that, too. Our devs are working like their number one task right now is just to speed up the filtering. So if you have to take a moment right now, it's going to take like a couple seconds or something like that for it to load. We're making it so that it actually won't happen that way. So you can do it really quickly. So we got Amazing. you. Amazing. Um, but yeah, seriously, see that Bryce Miller's four seam against lefties is really bad and he needs something else. Gotcha. So maybe he does. Maybe he gets better. Didn't look better. What yesterday? So yeah. I, I hope so. I think there's more upside, though, because he does do really well against right handers with that four seamer. So Bryce Miller I'm over Hunter Brown, but definitely Nick Pavetta. Nick Pavetta for sure. Mark at Black Coffee 816 says, Can you talk about Brandon Fought? I am very optimistic on Brandon Fought. I think all my listeners know this about Brandon Fought. Yeah. Tell me why. What, I just like seeing a young pitcher go back and forth and make developments and improve in the way he finished the season. This when he strike. How rate, did he improve? The K to walk. I see this is where you you go deeper. I look statistically, the K to walks improved. The K to walk is my number one stat I look at when I look at pitchers. You got the you got the you got the stuff. It's there. Yeah. K to walk is always great. Trust me, I'm, well, I'm a big fan of Caper Walk. Yeah. That's a he, K to walk. He, he went deeper into games. The K to walks were there. Okay. His walk, like so, his walks went down. Strikeouts went up. All the good things there. I'll make this easy. There okay, what no. makes up K's? How do you? How does the pitcher whiffs. get strikes? Whiffs potential. Okay, so strikes. then you got to look at the pitches and say what pitches get swing strikes. Right. Okay. 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 How do you get few walks? You no, know, you, you walk people by by throwing balls. So, so if you don't walk, then you feel through or the ball rate goes down. Great. Yeah. So <laughs> what pitches have strike rates, right? High strike rate. Okay. This is easy. Like I'm not, it's not. Oh, I know. I get it. I just have, I just don't dig, it. I don't dig into every pitcher like you do. That's why you are on my show right now, Nick. <laughs> okay. So then the other element is like, yeah, but he throws strikes and he allows hits. So then you can actually look at that. We have ICR rate. 
And ICR rate is a, is something we're pushing a lot more these year these days because honestly, it, we just show that yeah, it's better. And ICR rate stands for ideal contact rate. So instead of looking at barrel percentage or hard hit percentage, instead or hard contact, it's just the collection of barrels and solid contact and flares and burners, aka the grouping of batted balls that are beneficial for a batter. Okay? okay. So how many of these pitches that he throws are good for batters? And that's a really important thing to note because that's when you can say, oh, cool, this pitch gets pummeled or not. And I, if there's, ooh, please, PSA, everyone. Just take a moment. <laughs> Just listen deeply, okay? You, you are so, you are a studious, you are smart because you're listening to this Bench with Bubba podcast, especially on the live stream. Oh, Bowden Pitch today. Thank you so much, Daniel Silver. I'll watch it later. Um, just remember this. You, from this moment on, are going to stop grading pitches based on their ex-woba and their batting average allowed. Okay? You're smarter than that. Because you know that a changeup that isn't thrown in the zone is always going to have a low batting average or low woba because if they swing at it, they'll miss. And they won't allow a hit on it. You know, they would, and guys don't throw those in three ball counts, which means they won't allow walks. Anytime they end plate appearances, it's always in the benefit of the pitcher. Okay? Sure. It is a bad way to judge a pitch. So you're going to be smart, and you're not going to tell me that Tyler Glasnow's curveball is the best pitch in baseball <laughs> because of its low ex-woba because you're going to realize he has a low strike rate on it, just like Kodai Senga's forkball, and only throws it in non three strike three ball counts and often in two strike counts and out of the zone. Thank you for listening to this PSA. Okay, so what should I know about Brandon Fought? Oh yeah, Brandon Fought, he has a sweeper. So sweepers is best pitch. Uh he doesn't go inside to left so like lefties lefties are sorry, opposite handed batters uh destroy sweepers. Okay. It has bad platoon splits. It's a really good pitch for same hand batters and bad or opposite handed. So lefty. So what is his approach against opposite handed? He still throws these sweepers and they get hit. Brandon Fought could have a much better four seamer. He does not get this thing upstairs enough than he needs to. Change up sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. In the playoffs, he had these good runs. I think honestly, I remember watching it feeling like he got a little bit lucky. He was really spying that sweeper to right handers effectively. He had a good run of good cha- uh, four seamer locations and change ups. But because the sweeper is his best pitch, I'm out. Because that can't be your best pitch. You need something more stable against left-handers. And uh, that makes me not in favor. I would rather have Matt Manning. All righty then. All right. I have shares of both. No, it's fine. Hey, the truth hurts. Um, Kyle Bland at Blandalytics. You might know this individual. Who? What? Yeah. He asks, are the Mariners the most interesting rotation in baseball? So what is it's kind of a tongue and it's kind of a tongue in cheek. I have a feeling. Yeah. You know so interesting is a fun one. I, uh, I would say, I oh mean, most interesting. Funny, I saw this tweet. And I was like, Oh, cool. Maybe Nick, you should think about this. And then I didn't, I would say the Red Sox. Uh, because I'm young so players curious now. about Bayo and Whitlock and Hulk and Pavetta. And I, I just want to see that soar, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm super interested in that one. I'm even oh, and Cutter Crawford. Oh my gosh, I could even forget that one. Yes, how like dare all you. five of those pitchers. I'm so intensely focused on. I uh, <laughs> that's why I would say interesting. Like the manners are great, um, and I'm I love that. But yeah, Maybe that's probably the most interesting to me right now. The knob says the Reds. The Reds Maybe. are not because they just. It's like they have a haze thrown over them given what what is someone I, I know it's no one here that made up this term like Great American what park? What is it? Great American small park. <laughs> <laughs> and no one here may, no one here That's operates with term, that term. Guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I put that in the articles and no one corrects it just because it's something I've said forever. Any other person oh, I, I just start, I just say it all the time now. It's just yeah. like I, I used to give credit to you all the time. It's like everyone knows this is the bubbles. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's me. It's one of the few things. <laughs> oh good. Um, I love it. Uh, Rick Hammond says, would you keep Reagan's or Yuri Perez? <laughs> if you're watching live, folks, you know the answer. It was cool, Reagan's. Um, yeah. Sorry. Adam Reck- okay, Cam- actually, I can I can give you a little thing on, okay. on Yuri. Okay. Um, Yuri is going to be amazing. Uh, he has two problems at the moment. One is four-seamer locations. Uh, that four-seamer had a super high ICR last year. 
and that's ideal contact rate allowed a lot of bad contact not in his favor um or good contact not in his favor whatever for the batter the, and it's because he doesn't spot it well. He puts it middle away. There's something I absolutely detest. It's any sort of fastball middle away. Um, just don't do that. Please stop. It's not good. Even if it's like, there is even this quadrant that you see a ton where it's like a between middle and up away and not co- quite at the corner, but not quite middle. Guys live there and they just get destroyed all the time. And they say, no, he has decent whiff rates. Yeah, and then when they don't miss, they destroy it and it's not worth it. Um, George Kirby, perfect example. Um, and Yuri needs to learn how to make this middle up um, more, and I don't feel like he's going to. Also, the slider had a really good swing strike rate, rates last year. I think it's more so because the fastball was good and not because of the shape of it. It is not a vicious shaped slider. Um, curveball also has low strike rates, and that's it. That's all that Yuri Perez has right now. So I feel like he needs to develop something more and also fine tune that four seamer. All of that said, he is so tall and somehow still is like an amazing shape fastball. And I don't get it. And it's he's a unicorn this way. Um, but yeah, he's ridiculous and amazing extension and great IVB and not terrible VAA, which is weird. And amazing velocity. Like it should be just one of the best fastballs in baseball. He's just not spotting it in the right place. Hopefully he figures um, it out. So, he's young. He's young. Yeah, there's going to be time, and I'm actually really upset that Sandy Alcantara is hurt for that reason. Yeah, you could be working with him. That would be yep. fun. Uh, Adam Reckham says, is there something to be said of the dominance early in the spring of the lefties, Reagan, Scooble, and Sale, and how they're all using their changeup and sliders to get swings and misses along with their elevated velocity? Is this the ideal pitch mix? I mean, having a lot of velocity and a changeup and slider that miss bats are always good things, so... Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I actually say you, I don't care as much for curveballs as I used to. I think they're more of just a strike pitch. I'd say that cutters need to be involved too. Um, four seamers as a predominant one, throw in a cutter and then you have a slider and a changeup as your big put away pitches. That's my oh, ideal mix. That works for me. A little movement on the fast stuff. That'd be good. The cutter. Yep. JKG, he DM'd me this, and I thought I'd bring this to the show because you would have a better answer than I. He says, he he's, no, he says, what? Because he says, may I ask, what do you use to see new pitches in the offseason, i.e. like Hunter Green's new pitches or other people? Because um, like all I know is stat cast. I don't dig into these. I, I wait for you guys to come out with graphs and charts and fun stuff, and then I <laughs> dig into that. So um, what do you utilize to check out all these new pitches? So to check out that is like to get updated that they have or to um, actually maybe both, them. maybe both. All right. So I'll do both. Um, yeah. So to figure out if they have them, I mean, Jeff Zimmerman's mining the news is great. We also inside of our discord, it's a PL plus only feature. So if you want to join it, it's gated and the greatest baseball community there is. I'm not even kidding. We banned cool. two people in seven years yeah, it's not bad. Uh, because of that. Um, and I absolutely just, it's, I think it's truly the greatest part of pitcher list uh, is our discord. And inside of that, Alex Tran put together a spreadsheet of tracking and new pitches. So that's the way that you can stay on top of all that stuff. Um, the way that I monitor it in spring trainer is twofold. Of course, as I mentioned, Stackcast, um, as you mentioned, I should say, I, I shouldn't get credit for that. Uh, you mentioned that, but I also watch as many as I can. And what I do is um, because this is the only thing I do. I don't do hitters and I don't do relievers even. I'm able to do my essential my SP roundup, but just of all the spring training games every morning. So I do that for the Plus Pitch podcast. I do an actual article now, which I never did before. I just realized I was making these notes anyway. So I might as well just shove them onto the site so you can read them too. No, there you and go. I also do it uh, and make those notes and record that podcast live on my stream, playback.tv uh, slash pitcher list. So you can join me. 10 a.m. to uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time every weekday morning. And I will be live uh, where you can track them with me. So, there you go. Good, time. good old eye test is a, is a great way to see these things. So good. That's why I started the site in the first place. It was yep. picture gifts so you can actually oh, visualize. Guys. There's a lot of great stories behind that, too. Um, <laughs> Jeff Long just has a comment. Is Aaron Jeff. Ashby's middle name George? So it's A-G-A. Well, not after today. <laughs> I didn't see what happened, so I got I actually I saw that tweet and I was like, how did he do? I was like, oh, he didn't do well. I hope it is. That would be dope. 
Uh, I love that a lot. Also, I didn't mention before that Shota is going to be great because his name is I'm an AGA. That is amazing. Like that yeah. is how's that? How do you not have a T-shirt yet? I know. Don't worry. <laughs> it's already okay. I got you. Um, <laughs> that's about said. Justin Dowling says, "Joe Ryan, please." Uh okay. <laughs> yeah. thoughts on joe ryan please I'll oh okay, i see him. yeah <laughs> now um joe ryan i i'm undecided so initially actually at the end of the year i had him like at 21 or so because i just thought yeah his fastball was great and he had a bad second half sure but he had this injury and whatever but um i came to a realization that he just didn't really have enough to support his four seamer it was a splitter that is in the zone but it, that's not a good one you don't really want a strike rate splitter uh, that means that it's in the zone a ton so that when batters are looking in the same place for the four-seamer, it falls down, but they're able to make the adjustment because it's slower and they can hit it inside the zone. Um, so not great. And then uh, a slider that just never really did enough. I haven't really gotten word that there's too much change. There is a sinker apparently that he's added, which is good. That should help against four-seamers upstairs. He's also a tick up on the four-seamer so far, and that's nice. But I really need to see a good breaking ball from Joe Ryan. I haven't seen it yet. I like him. I think there's room for growth and it could honestly just click one day that he has a better breaking ball and he's doing all the things to try and get it. So I'm kind of in. I have him like right around Darvish. And there are many drafts I think to myself, man, I should just get Joe Ryan. Like, what am I doing? Um, but because I haven't seen that breaking ball work yet, I'm slightly out. I don't need any analysis, just an answer. Ober or Ryan? Ober. Okay. Ober's throwing 93 now to 91. It's a beautiful slider cutter that he needed. And I call him Billy Oberizzi because you remember Jake Oberizzi he used to paint the top of the zone with four seamers. Like it would be like a red brush. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ober does now. And it's such good extension. He's good. Get beautiful. him. Thomas Travato got two more. Thomas Travato says, interested in what the high velocity pitchers like Hunter Green, Taj Bradley, Edward Cabrera need to develop that we should be looking for in spring training. Help us aside if they can turn into the corner this year. Great they're question. all cherry bombs. Ah, look at, oh man, he's losing my terms too. Mm -hmm. I love this. Guy. This is the best. Cherry bomb being super sweet or blow up in your face. Eric Cabrera's biggest weakness, and you'll see this on the site, is strike rate on four seamers. And so I actually, this is something I take from the scouting stuff that I do. Um, I think when I see guys with, I, uh, you know, with as cherry bombs, is generally a product of inconsistent command. Um, they clearly have the stuff to do it, and it's why I think like stuff is just a threshold, not a number. Um, where you, cool, you have enough stuff now, great, have good enough command. Otherwise, like you're gonna be a cherry bomb. Yeah. I watched Taj Bradley against the Yankees. Yeah, he's still bad mechanics of like too violent and not consistent. And I just don't think that he's going to be consistent enough to be not a cherry bomb. Hunter Green, I haven't been able to watch him yet. They just haven't given me anything. So I can't really tell you that's any different. Um, I think he needs a strike pitch and not a splitter. He needs a cutter. Uh, and that will help a ton. And that's really the bigger difference, I think, for him. Because I don't think his command is as bad. It's actually the fact that he throws hard, but its shape is bad. He doesn't get much extension. He doesn't get IVB. He doesn't get VAA. He doesn't get any of the things I talked about, say, for velocity. And there was actually a really, really amazing chart from 2022 of Hunter Green of showcasing where all of his hits were located. And all of them were like not high lock, like everything that was middle or low. So if he just gets it upstairs all the time, then it's great. Yeah. But he can't always do that. And pitching for Cincinnati is not good. No. Now, Eric Cabrera. Eric Cabrera, his thing, if you've seen the player pages of the strike and the fastballs, right? And watching him. His mechanics are not as violent and inconsistent as others. I've always been kind of weirded out that Eric Cabrera just couldn't do this. I just, it just didn't sit right with me. I was like, I'm watching this. I'm like, why is this? His ICRs are also really low. And that's good. That means like batters have such a tough time uh, barreling him and making good contact on him. So as long as he's getting strikes with four seamers, all of a sudden his changeup's always really good. I mean, hopefully the curveball is consistent then he can actually just unlock it all. And the start that I saw, it was a whole four-seamers middle up, exactly what he should be doing, not any of the four-seamers up and arm side out of the zone. And that was the most encouraging I've seen, uh, encouraging start for Eric Cabrera. That was the game he went three innings and 30 pitches. 
and then needed to complete more in the pen. So I'm kind of in on Edward Cabrera right now. Yeah, Cabrera is interesting. So you mentioned the, the good starts with him, and he's had just some absolute beauties that make you think, okay, it's there. It's there. Like, can we put it together more consistently? That'd be pretty awesome. Or right. uh, Hunter Green, it's just like, okay, when he's out of the ballpark, not he's not bad. He can get away with a few things. In the ballpark, can't get away with a whole lot. So it uh, yeah, no. definitely limits things. All right. Last question I have for you here, and I saved the kind of quote unquote fun one for last. Oh, All right. God. You got something? No, no, that was one question left. Oh, oh. and I heard, oh, no, I was a different show. Never mind. So leave it for that. Um, the Pharaoh wife, one Danielle Salinger, oh, asks, man. Yeah. Top five places to eat in New York that are not <laughs> Applebee's. <laughs> and I know the joke behind this. You're allowed to elaborate if you'd it. like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So last year, it was, uh, it was Tab Wars weekend. Um, and I'm really excited because Tab Wars weekend is a week from today. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I'm going to see Danielle. I'm going to see Justin. It's going to be a fantastic time. What happened was uh, the Friday night before Tout, um, there was an NFBC thing at Dave & Buster's. That's actually where Tout, the, the thing is going to be a Saturday night, um, I think. But uh, it was at the Dave & Buster's and everybody, like we had like a group of like eight or ten of us. Mm -hmm. And so we're all going there and people want to eat too. So it just happened to be like they wanted to stay here and wait for the other people at NFBC. And we were just sitting down at Applebee's just like wait, but then turned into us eating dinner there. <laughs> and Danielle was like, are you serious? I went out to get dinner and like you took me to Applebee's in Times Square. And trust me, I didn't like it either. Okay. Absolutely terrible. Like just, just really, really bad. Um, I have some soft spot places. I don't know if everyone's going to agree with, but I love Hillstone. Um, Aldi La in Park Slope. Oh absolutely amazing italian i'm a huge italian fan um those are the, those are the two that really really stick out of course uh oh man i uh, i have more and i'm just kind of blanking at the moment but don't worry danielle we're gonna go to ali law we're gonna have a great time and uh you're gonna love it yeah some good italian food is always a great way to anybody's heart i feel like i know i'm yes. speaking for everybody italian might not be for everybody but i'm with you on that one i think danielle she'll enjoy it she'll probably have some nice you know red wine to go with it and whatnot and have an evening of it while justin goes and you know does whatever justin does so it'll be fun it'll be like a normal friday night probably for the salingers where justin podcasts in the backyard and it'll be great but you got to visit them. You got to stay with them. So you know better than I. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I met their, their lovely children, too, who are incredible. You got the whole, got the whole and show. It was back. wonderful. Oh, yeah. All right, Nick. I appreciate you. I've kept you long enough. I appreciate enough. you. Um, we'll have to do this again, obviously, sooner than later. But uh, before hey, we. Hey, hey, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. If you're listening, have you rated and reviewed this podcast? Jesus. <laughs> <I'm sick. laughs> okay, Bubba, be honest with me right now. How yeah. much does that help? It helps a it ton. Helps. It helps a it helps ton. A ton, yes. right? Yes, it does. And it's so easy to do it. Help a ton. This yes. guy deserves it. He works his butt off for all of these things. Bubba, this is awesome. I uh, thank you for bringing me on for episode one thousand. Uh, this was yeah. so touching. For episode one thousand, is amazing. Uh, he's no, already, he's already is try, he's absolutely already to, bonkers. He's already trying to plant his way on the one thousand. <laughs> <that. laughs> no, I'm I'm planting the fact that you're going to get to one thousand. Oh, I, I will. That's I will I'm not doing. give up by then. That will happen. I appreciate that. There it is. Uh, um, Six sixty is remarkable. Who are you going to bring on in uh, in six episodes? <laughs> I guess we'll have to see. Um, I, I was nervous about that as well. Already seeing these numbers. Yeah. Who who should I bring on? That'll be the uh, interesting story on that one. Let's bring some, just someone that just, oh, no, I don't know. Not bring on Yancey. Anything. The answer is always Yancey. That would be hilarious, actually. He would embrace the heel role. That would be good. I feel so, like he's dressed up as the devil for Halloween one. I would guess he has before. If he hasn't, yeah. his wife has for other things. Absolutely. They Believe talk about one. their minxy time. Uh, but we'll leave it at that. If you've listened this long, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, make sure you go to pitcherlist.com. Go check out all the goodies there. The player pages, I heard, are pretty cool. Uh, pretty PLV, good. other great stuff. Um, go check out the Litany of Podcasts because Pitcherlist Podcast Network won Podcast of the Year. Nick is another writer of the year once again. Um, or no. article, article of the year. research Art article of the article year of the that year. was Sorry. mostly Sorry. Kyle Bland and company. Uh, okay, hey, do not want to hey, know. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, well, this is you wouldn't plug your stuff, so I'm plugging it for you. And this is what happens. Um, I, I didn't get the show sheet ahead of time, so I didn't look at my email. But, um, with all that being said, 
Nick's a great friend of mine, as you can tell from the show. A lot of back and forth fun around here. Uh, check out all the good stuff because if, I'm, I'm guessing if you listen to my show, you know who Nick Pollock is. But for now, everybody, this was Bench with Bubba, episode 660. Catch you all next time. <laughs>